Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson this morning is from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne for seeing this, God spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and, all, and of that all of us are witnesses. The Word of the Lord. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my God, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand and I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for everyone. This Sunday morning we are going to again return to our practice of Lectio Divina with our epistle reading. For those of you that are joining us for the first time and a little refresher for all of us, as you listen to this passage, which we're going to read three times, as you 
Listen to it for the first time. Listen for a word or phrase that attracts you. It can be any word. Allow it to arise from the passage as if it's God's word for you today, this very day. Sit in silence for a little while, repeating that word or phrase in your head, and then say the word aloud. Blessed be God, to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Is there anyone that would like to share some words or phrases that were illuminated to them during that first reading? You can also text me at 803-514-3088. New birth. Protected. New hope. Hope. Living hope. Mercy. Protected by the power of God. Living hope. New hope. An indescribable joy in our faith, from the text line. Salvation of souls. Living hope. Or 
Driving the outcome of faith. For me, it was for a little while. Mercy. Receiving the outcome of faith. As you hear this reading a second time, ask how this word or phrase speaks to your life and why it has connected with you. Why is God lifting this word up to you? Ponder it carefully. Don't worry if you get distracted. Maybe part of your response to offer it to God. Sit in silence and then Frame a single sentence that begins to say aloud what this word or phrase or phrase says to you. A reading from 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Would anyone like to share with us now why they think that word or phrase has been lifted up in their own, in their own personal and particular experience these days?
Living hope is a daily practice of keeping God, keeping God's will before me and the knowledge that all will be well. To continue to praise the Lord even in suffering. That we all have to suffer various trials. That hope springs eternal. To be hopeful because we are protected by God even in times of trouble. Hope is alive, it is real, even during times of trial. It is through the power of God that we will get through this test of fire. That is from the text line. You don't see him, but you love him. A reminder that we are protected by God, even as scary things are all around us. God's mercy will prevail. While I cannot see him, I love God and he loves me. Faith carries us through all times, good and bad, from the text line. For a little while, using Kairos time, not Kronos time. We are assured that our faith will bring us hope even now during this pandemic. <clears throat> Thank you all for your contributions. This third time we go through, and this is Sort of the, this is the most important of all because this is this is the way we take these thoughts and these reflections and we turn them into a thought, a movement, a mission for the day. And so as you hear this passage the last time, ask what Christ is calling from you, you specifically, and what it is that you need to do or consider or relinquish, or take on as a result of what God is saying to you in this word or phrase. And the silence that follows compose a prayer for the grace of the Spirit to accomplish this in your day or your week or your life. And then if you are comfortable, please share it with us. A reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls.
Those prayers are coming in already. Please keep them coming. Loving God, please help me to remember not to fear the unknown as I am constantly protected by you through your mercy. Living Hope, Heavenly Father, help me to put your will before mine today. Lord, continue to protect us. Help us to love ourselves as you love us. And help us to share that love with others. Help us to have genuine faith and all will be well. Dear God, our Father, please give us patience during this trying time to always remember what is important. Heavenly Father, help us to remember that this sacrifice we make is so small, so trivial in the light of those that have been made before us. God, be with us during these turbulent times. Dear Lord, help me to remember that through Jesus' death, I can be hopeful of better days. I can know that you are protecting me during these difficult times, and I love you and praise you for this. Lord, give us hope and your mercy and help us to trust and to love you and to know that you are always with us. Continue to share these and, and uh, if they come, up, come to your mind throughout the service, continue to share them and I will add them in as we get to the prayers of the people uh, in a few moments. For now, let us turn to our gospel. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was what was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of of the nails in my hand and his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them and the doors were shut. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands 
Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. I always love that line, uh, peace be with you, from Jesus. It's sort of like, are you kidding me? We just saw you dragged away and crucified, not to mention buried in a tomb. And now we are hiding away and being hunted down. Feels like the whole world is falling apart. And here you show up, not a ghost, but a man in the flesh, challenging all laws of biology and physics and common sense and tell us to have peace, to chill. Give me a break, right? Is there anything that gets you more charged up, more angry than someone telling you to calm down, relax, tranquilo? I doubt it because whenever I say it to someone, I see the fire rise in their eyes. But Jesus, you see, Jesus can get away with it because he doesn't just say it. He brings it. He brings peace with the gift of the Holy Spirit that he has given to all of us. His presence is a balm on our anxiety. Anxiety prescriptions are up about 36% in the last few months, by the way. Bible sales probably are about the same. Not up, but the same as they were before. We need the real stuff, though. The real peace. The kind that only comes from the comfort of the Holy Spirit, which flows from Christ to us. Now, nerves, I know, are feeling a little raw these days. I sensed a shift in the last week. People are getting antsy. People are getting angry. People are getting frustrated, and people are once again getting callous. I remember my first meeting about this pandemic in early mid-March with other priests and diocesan leaders, perhaps, someone said, perhaps this will unify us, will bring us back together. Crisis has a way of doing that, at least in the past, but I'm afraid, y'all, because I see once again I see people once again at each other's throats. And that is because it is peace, true peace, that we lack. I was, uh, I was watching this crazy movie last night, Grey Gardens. I don't know if any of you have seen it. Um, it's wild. By the way, Turner Classic Movies has been doing their film festival that is usually in L.A., uh, in theaters, they've been doing it on TV all week. And last night was network too, which is, that's a sermon for another day. But uh, Grey Gardens, that is a wild movie. And there's this scene in, this, in the movie where they are, uh, the reclusive mother and sister are in this room where they, lit, where they live pretty much their whole lives in this huge mansion. And they're listening to some pastor on the radio. At least I, I think it's a pastor. And he, he says, you must chill, he says. The mind does not work when it is hot. The mind must be cool, chill. I have no idea what he is referring to in his homily or if it was a homily at all. It's just a small clip of the film, but he's right. The mind does not work when it is hot. And how hot our minds have been these last few years and how hot they are running now. We need peace. And there is only one place to get it, and that is from Christ. That is believing in Christ and the Holy Spirit. Now, 
you may not be able to stick your fingers in the wounds of Jesus like Thomas, but maybe your doubts can be erased by reflecting for a moment and looking at the world around us and realizing where else can you find this peace? Certainly not social media, certainly not the television, our hearts and minds have been full of magma, hot garbage. And there is only one way to extinguish that, folks, and that is the peace that Jesus Christ has given us. And so let us find it together. Let us chill, relax. Don't shoot the messenger. Tranquilo. And now, let us pray together as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the world and the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For our bishop. And for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, Camden, and for Kershaw County, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering and affected by the COVID-19 virus, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for the prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, and oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. For who else shall we pray this morning? We pray for patience as we wait for the blessings we know you have for us.
We pray for trust. We pray for Julia Halford. We pray for Billy Nettles. We pray for Agnes. We pray for Mike Clyburn. We pray for our church staff and their families. Pray for Willard Polk. Pray for Rich Pinkerton. We pray for Lindy and family. We pray for Jeff Tyndall. We pray for all the men and women serving in our armed forces. We pray for Mary Rainwater. We pray for all health care and essential workers. Pray for understanding. We pray for small businesses and all those who are unemployed. We pray for our children. We pray for those impacted by the tornadoes. Yes, and we pray for safety for all those who may be impacted tonight. We pray for Jim Parrish. We pray for Mary Graham. We pray for all of our church family during this time we cannot assemble together. We pray for Doug McPhee. We pray for Michael Knight. We pray for Tootie Mackey. Let us pray. This is another day, O Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words. And give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
God's, God's peace. peace. Stay safe and remember that God loves you. Peace be with you. God's peace, everyone. Miss seeing you in church. Hope you're all well. Peace. Al, give me a peace. Peace. This is the better setup. Adelon, give me God's peace. Peace. God's peace. 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 Yes, it's peace. Like God's peace. Peace be with you. Good morning, everyone. I just want to say thank you for all the encouraging words you've sent in, whether it's through email or phone calls or the little notes that have been put in the mail. Thank you so much, and I just want to wish you a blessed Easter and love you guys. God's peace. Peace. Happy Easter from the McKelveys. God's peace, everybody, and God's peace from my family. Peace. Oh, we can't all get in. One at a time. Peace. <laughs> God's peace, everybody. I got a bigger chair here. It's more comfortable, but it also makes moving around a little more difficult. God's peace from Ponza and the Vons. God's, God's peace from... Uh, God's peace from Karen and Bill and Pamela and the Osmonds and Barbara Beard. And she also pray for our grandchildren for sure. Uh, God's peace from Susie Prettyman and Nancy Wiley and Carla Knight, Connie Whalen, Kathy Kovacs. God's peace from Dwight Deloach and the Deloaches, from the Condors, from the Wages, from the Benedettis, uh, from the Burns. Louise Burns and Jim, from Lynn Godwin, from Rogers Pinder, from Connie Whalen, from Margaret Ellis, from Joe DeLoach, John Hungerford, Donna Trapp, from Lisa Tal and Tina Lockhart, Amy Kiner, Daphne Canny, Jan Foreman, Marjorie Huntington, Peace from Charles and Aaron and John Foster, from Ben Mackey, from Candace Preeb, all the Preebs, from the Boykins, from Mary Elizabeth and Ank, from Karen Callitz, from Molly Nettles and Billy, peace. I have to show you all something. This is my new uh, favorite possession. And uh, a special thank you um, goes out to, uh, to Nancy Wiley for thoughtfully, thoughtfully putting it together for me. Peace from, uh, from Barbara Davis and peace from the Burnses, uh, Fran and Moultrie and James and Elizabeth and peace from James Parrish. But I have to show you all this. You're all going to be jealous. Look at my face mask. <laughs> that Nancy Wiley made for me. It's perfect. So if you see this in the store, it's me. Be nice to me. Don't bump me out of the way for toilet paper. It's your priest. It's a wonderful mask. I'm very grateful for it. Peace from, from Aunt Sue Orsalak out there. Peace from Barbara Taylor. We're glad to have all of you with us. Um, just a couple quick announcements. I talked to you guys last week about doing um, front porch photos. We are still going to do that. I'm going to get Tracy to send out a schedule, and we're going to put that together. Um, the girls and I are going to try and go down to Pauly's on, on Wednesday um, and get away for a little bit. Uh, but I'm still, you still, you all have my cell phone number. You can still call me. We're still going to do the service on Sunday. Uh, it may just have a different background, maybe some waves, uh, back behind us. We'll see. Uh, we're going to try and figure all that out, but, but remember that you guys, uh, can always still get a hold of me. Um, I know that slowly things are starting to open up. I'm, I'm not going to say anything about that. Uh, I will say that uh, when it comes to the church, just remember that our directives don't come from the governor.
They come from the bishop. And so we will keep you all in tune on that. I uh, I'm acutely aware that some of you are not going to be comfortable to return when we do return. And I don't think it's going to be for a little while anyway, at least in our diocese. So I'm going to be working in the meantime at trying to get Wi-Fi into the into the church building, into the sanctuary, and finding a way that we can um, we can still continue to broadcast our services at least for a little while um, to bridge the gap. Uh, because I want uh, there's still a lot of you that need to really be careful and take care of yourself, and there's still a lot of us that need to be careful so that we can help take care of you. And so we're going to do that. Um, your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, as always, you can Venmo us, keep supporting us uh, by sending in your checks. You guys have been doing a great job of that. Um, we are great. We are grateful. We're going to send out statements this week. They are not a demand for you to send us money. They're just to let you know where you are. And we do them this time of year anyway. Um, attached to those, I will I will, uh, I will have a little letter out to you just explaining our situation, which is not dire by any means. Um, and so, uh, but just kind of explaining the path forward. Uh, but we love all you guys. I hope you enjoy this Sunday before the weather gets crazy tonight. I hope you stay safe tonight and, um, and look out for, for emails and check-ins this week and for that sign up for front, front porch portraits. We would love to, um, we would love to do that. But until we see each other again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he shine his light upon you and may he keep you safe now and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.